Okay, hi, I'm Phil Toy. I'm um, an immunologist at, in the biotech team and i team leader for the animal health activities within biotech, which is focused mainly on development of vaccines and diagnostics and also biosecurity protocols. I first came to this campus in 1986 uh, when it was called ILRAD and then left in 1995 uh, where I went into the private sector working with a medium-sized biotech company and then returned about five years ago in November 2006. I think the changes I've seen in Ilri have been quite dramatic. In 1986 to when I left in 94, this whole campus of about 60 odd scientists was focused really on two diseases, on two cattle diseases and indeed on two diseases which are limited to Africa. And the focus was on developing vaccines for those diseases. When I returned in 2006, I came to an institute which had a much broader range of expertise, going well beyond molecular biologists, immunologists, etc., to sociologists, to economists, to people who study and understand market dynamics and market access. And I think this gives Ulri uh, a unique, almost, potential to look at the problems affecting small livestock owners, poor livestock owners, and developing solutions employable, practical solutions to those particular problems. I think the major achievement of the group over the last five years has been to develop a much more balanced portfolio of activities. Five years ago, the, the major activities were concerned with East Coast Fever and in particular the development of a vaccine against East Coast Fever, plus a few smaller activities as well. Now, for example, we have much greater uh, emphasis on African swine fever and on contagious bovine pleuropneumonia through the dedicated efforts and, and the great perseverance of the people involved in these projects. And what's important is they were developed looking beyond the technology. They were developed trying to look at the social aspects of the livestock owners that these diseases would affect and also the ability of these technologies to meet end user needs and how they would be effectively rolled out. I think the other balance we've brought to the portfolio is to increase the number of projects focused on more immediate impacts. So for example, the uh, development, the underpinning of the rollout of the infectious and treatment method of vaccination against East Coast fever, uh, which vaccine is protecting the lives of cattle, uh, particularly in northern Tanzania, Kenya and Uganda. The development of a, a pancide test for, for pig tapeworm is another more recent example of, a, of an outcome and output which may have a medium effect as well. And more recently, the development of a thermostable vaccine for PPR, in other words, a vaccine which is stable without refrigeration. So I think th this adds another dimension to the sorts of activities we're, we're undertaking in BT01. And I think the third achievement uh, within the group is the development of field-based activities. Um, in the last five years, we've in we initiated a project in Busia in Western Kenya called IDEAL, uh, a Wellcome Trust funded project led by the University of Edinburgh, uh, which uh, caused us to establish a laboratory out there. That laboratory has since been used by the PAS, the People, Animals and Zoonoses Project, another Wellcome Trust funded project led by Eric Fevre, and more recently, substantial African swine fever research activities led by Richard Bishop have been undertaken and will continue to be undertaken in the laboratory in Busia. So, this is getting people out of the laboratory and interacting with our clients, the, the poor livestock owners. We need to get the balance right between the amount of applied research, those leading towards more immediate impact, and the undertaking of more basic research to solve the more intractable problems. Uh, the latter, of course, are higher risk but also higher return uh, if we manage to develop solutions versus spreading yourself too thin over several projects where you don't really have traction. So that is a real issue we have to, have to address. And it comes when you're trying to obtain and getting more resources. Do you put those resources into a new area or do you throw them at the current projects in the hope of accelerating solutions and being able to make a difference uh, more quickly than with the resources you already have. And I hope that with the, as we move into these CRPs, this will help enormously in, in our getting more focused and delivering more impact in the field.